Well, we are now live, so depending on what just happened and how we've introduced this, you may or may not be watching this. Uh, if you haven't watched, been watching it this week, then do try and find it next week. Search for a blog to watch weekly live and you will find it. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of us on the screen mm -hmm. just now. We'll quickly go around. We've already said good morning to Ariel and David, but let's say good morning, Ripley. Who are you? Where are you? What are you wearing on your wrist? Uh, good morning, or I guess, yeah, I guess it's my good night, your morning. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm in Los Angeles, so just after midnight, and I am wearing a Garmin because it's my alarm clock in the morning. Good, good. Uh, Leslie, where are you and what are you wearing? I'm in Dublin, Ireland, and uh, I'm wearing your favorite watch break. Look, it's a, it's a, it's a reversal. A reversal. My horse is at the back. You know? Your polo horse is just out the back, the waiting, back, back. tied up, tied up. Good stuff. <laughs> Will, good morning. Where are you today and what are you wearing? Uh, very good morning. Um, I'm coming to you live from Poland. Um, I'm normally in uh, just outside of London, uh, but visiting family in Poland today. Uh, and it's very snowy and very frosty. And this morning I'm wearing my uh, Rolex uh, date um, from 1960 on a uh, Barkenjack uh, NATO strap. Wait a minute. We, we don't get promotional activities already. We've only just started. <laughs> it's on a, a generic <laughs> NATO source from where all the other NATOs are sourced from. Uh, <laughs> right. Other NATO straps are available. Yes, on the blog. No, we don't sell straps. We don't sell watches. Anyway, yeah, no, right. No. Uh, <laughs> Ralph, good morning. Where are you and what are you wearing? Good morning. Yeah, my name is Ralph. I'm uh, based in Dubai lovely 25 degrees and sunny outside so right. uh, i am wearing a blancpain villeray demi savonette annual calendar with moon face very good yeah, it and is by jean claude biver on dubai watch week good good anchor where are you and what are you wearing good afternoon from nepal i am wearing my bel canto this is a limited edition of 200 pieces the sand glass dial I got this three weeks ago. I haven't taken off my wrist. Incredible watch. Good the kids. best watch purchased ever. Oh, that, that fine praise indeed. Uh, coming from uh, Nepal, from our our dealer, authorized dealer in Nepal. Uh, do you? Uh, you've never. You don't. No, Christopher Rods are also online, so you, you've not got a retail unit. This is this is an independent assessment. There we go. Right, we're going to play hit miss maybe with these good people. We're going to score it, although the scoring system is going to be so complicated that I'm probably just going to make it up. But it's basically like football. It's hit miss maybe. It's three points for a hit. One point for a maybe and zero points for a miss. And then it's a percentage. So eventually we'll we'll develop a, a theme as to just how well watches are scoring. So I'm going to share the screen for all of those uh, following along at home. And the first watch we're going to look at is going to be the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean 600 meter 39.5 millimeter summer blue. Okay, everybody, you all should have signs prepared. So on the count of three, I want you to show me show me some love with your sign. So on the count of three, is it a hit, a miss, or a maybe? Let's see the signs. Hurry. Oh, a... what do we have? We have a miss, maybe, maybe, hit, 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 maybe. Oh. Okay, Ariel, tell us why it's a maybe. I like the Planet Ocean a lot in a larger size. So for me, I, I just I see it as being too small for my tastes. I also think that at seventy four hundred dollars uh, with a movement that is, you know, now a little bit on the aging side, it's a very aggressive statement, especially when the 300 M is like two thousand dollars cheaper. <laughs> and, and I mean. You know, in a lot of ways, the same watch. Yes, 300 meters less water resistance that no one's ever going to use. Yeah. Um. So again, a a fan in general, but this is not the version for me. Okay, Ripley, what did you vote? Why did you vote it? I, I said it's a hit. Um. I you know you have to look at it within the context of the other watches that are part of that series. I think the smaller size works and makes sense because they got the ultra deep. If you wanted the bigger one. Plus, I'm not as manly as some of you other folks, so a sub 40 millimeter diver is perfect for my little wrist. Okay, who who else is manly enough to give it a hit? Ralph, what did you vote? Yeah, sorry, I forgot my 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 little. Uh, you, you're sacked. You don't get to come back. So, no sign. Yeah. 
I love the color. I love the Fumé dial. And I think the size is perfect. So um, it's a clear hit for me. Yes, the price is a bit of a handful, but it's um, discounts are on the horizon again. So I guess you can get a good deal eventually. Anchor, would you wear this 39.5 millimeter watch? I would wear it, but I wouldn't pay for it. So that's a miss for me. <laughs> That sounds like a very good summation from my point of view. Will maybe. Um, I said I said hit, but I went back and forth on this before I eventually went for hit. I, I think it's a hit with the market that it's probably um aiming at in terms of summertime people with smaller wrists. I have to say, like like myself, but I do have a soft spot for the larger uh, omegas that literally just pull your wrist uh, pull your wrist down and you feel like you're wearing some sort of substantial weapon. Um, <laughs> but I think overall it's a hit and I really like the blue as well. Yeah. Uh, Leslie, um, are we I'm, more used to judging I'm food? Just, judge this watch. Well, I, yeah, um, I'm fairly shallow. I just really like the colour. I just thought it was a really attractive colour. And also that 39... The under 40 is suits me. I have a, an Amiga Speedmaster that's that size, and I still wear it all the time. It uh -huh. looks a little chunkier than it, but um, but no, I mean, yeah, okay, seven, eight grand is expensive, but I don't know, compared to what you pay for Rolex and stuff these days, I don't know, I'd, I'd, I'd rather that. Comparison is a thief of joy, though. David, is this going to thieve you of seven and a half grand? No, um, it was a maybe for me as well. It's, as long as the 300M exists, I would go for that and not the PO. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a miss for me. 39.5, it's no size for a dive. It's not a dive watch, but it's 39.5. Come on, guys, get a grip. That's not a dive watch. It's a trinket. It's a, a mere bagatelle at 39.5. But there we go. So eventually when we put this live, you'll be able to go into the comment section on YouTube and join in and tell us if you thought it was a hit, a miss, or maybe 2024 is going to be a fairly big year for doing a lot more video uh, on or a lot more video for a blog to watch. Ariel, what else do we expect to see video wise from a blog to watch in 2024? We're going to ramp up watch reviews, including more content from other team members on the blog to watch team. Uh, we have a lot of discussion around how we can incorporate more video discussion and commentary on social media. The community wants to know our opinions about certain topics in sort of a more immediate way and not necessarily always watch reviews. Um, there was going to also going to be more video of the other podcasts I do superlative in addition to this one. So between these various activities, uh, we're going to have more video content to explore different ways of, of promoting it. Maybe this is the year we get on TikTok. I'm not sure, but um, it's a, it's potential. Mm, TikTok excitement. Are we, are we all excited about TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> it does seem it should be a channel that's appropriate for, you know, watches being called TikTok and all that. I was told <laughs> by enthusiasts and buyers and things like that. They said it to me. It wasn't like brands mm. being like, yeah, you got to be on TikTok. It was people who got sick of the oversaturation on places like Instagram. This is what they're just telling me. And they're like, oh, yeah, this fresh territory in TikTok. I got to go mm. here. Uh, eventually, TikTok may succumb to the same saturation point and mm. other platforms will pop up. But there appears to be um, uh, an, a phenomenon where platforms start. Uh, once it gets cool, it becomes oversaturated. It's no longer easy to find cool stuff because there's too much to sort through. And then uh, people you know, uh, go elsewhere to uh, green mm. pastures. Okay, okay. let's uh, look at watch number two. And this is... A watch from ID Genève, the circular S watch with sun forged steel. The main selling point of this seems to be that the steel has been forged, e.g. melted and then cast into an appropriate shape using rays directly from the sun. So basically you gather the sunshine in a load of mirrors, you point it at a bit of solid metal and the heat concentrated from the mirrors melts the metal in the solar furnace and therefore you don't need to burn any electricity although you do need to pay for and produce an enormous number of mirrors and all the infrastructure and land and you know all the rest of the carbon that needs spent to actually do that in the first place in order to produce one watch uh what do we think of this leonardo dicaprio appears to think that it's a hit uh, it is yellow. That's pretty much all I can say about it in terms of, well, sunshine is important. So they've given it a yellow case. It does have that kind of a Maurice Lacroix icon 
sizing and shape and the way that the strap fits into the watch case. It's an ETA. 2824 but the question is is it a hit a miss or a maybe so on the count of three gentlemen hit miss or maybe okay we have a selection so a fairly broad selection let's go to leslie who's got a kind of meh vibe about this yeah it just it just didn't excite me the color i don't know if i I haven't said that I do have a yellow jacket that it would match quite nicely, but uh, I don't wear that that often. That cushion um, behind your head, I think we go well yes, with actually, it. Yes, actually, exactly, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, four and a half grand or something, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, I don't want to be associated with Leonardo DiCaprio either, particularly. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. I mean, okay, you're, you're not young enough for Leo, you'll, you'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ralph, how did you vote in this? Yeah, clearly I'm also above 25, so I'm not qualifying anymore. Um, but I also, I voted Miss, because for me it's just, um, especially that case with the sun ray shape on the side, hmm. it's just a lint magnet, I think, and it just looks, I, I don't know, I think it's weird. I mean, of course, taste is, is personal, but not for me, absolutely not. Too many sun rays in too bold sun rays on that thing. Yeah, we did have a discussion earlier in the podcast about uh, sleeves and watches fitting under sleeves. David, when this went under your sleeve, would it pick up thread in what? Uh, hopefully, it's not too sharp a casing, but it certainly does, as Ralph pointed out, look like it. It, it may catch the occasional bit of dust. Mm. I quite like the uh, the number of bespoke details on the dial in the case. Uh, so I gave it a maybe uh, because I respect that. I'm not a fan of the proportions with the uh, with those big wide um, hands. And it's just the proportions, especially of the dial and the dial in the case, are just somehow off. So I think that needs a little bit more work. But I like that it's out there. I like that it's unique. So um, I wouldn't wear it. But again, I, I have respect for this watch. So um, yeah, it's a maybe for me. Anchor, could this ever take a place in your heart similar to the bel canto? You know, we for us it doesn't really matter how the steel is sourced. So and it's too much of a price for the watch. So no, yeah. I don't think so. I mean, I'm in Scotland, so no matter what you do, you're not gonna be able to sunforge this steel in Scotland. So you're gonna have to pay to get it shipped from Uzbekistan or wherever it is. I think some of like the Uzbeks are the ones that produce is a, there is a stand somewhere involved in this or previously they were one of the biggest solar uh, smelts in the world so you're still going to pay to ship it all across the world ariel you've actually worn this watch i think or handled it you certainly wrote yep. the article reflections i gave it a hit and i gave it a hit for the same reason why everyone else gave it a miss essentially <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. if you are a watch, if you are a male watch collector trying to make like a rationale in your mind for getting this, you're not going to do it. All right, but okay. this is a very romantic watch. Okay. Okay. I it's was totally in the romance. over the top, impractical. I mean, just the story about all the nonsense required to melt the steel. <laughs> this is exactly what women love to hear, right? So if you want a watch to, to, to use as a platform to tell a, a story to a woman, you get like you talked about. Oh, this is inspired by the sun. You can see that. She can look at that dial and be like, "Oh, okay, I can see that." We may not like it, but it tells the story—the silly, over-the-top, idealistic, romantic story very, very well. And I love it for that. If I if I needed it for that purpose, otherwise, no, I wouldn't. Oh, David Ariel is going to put the Capri on it. Exactly. <laughs> He's already <laughs> picking up women under twenty-five. Like, look, look at my romantic watch. <laughs> oh my God! Do you know where the steel came from? Have Literally you know, hours of sunlight were required to turn this. Have I mentioned it's ecologically me sound? <laughs> look at this cork. It's grown on trees. It's well, not killed like animals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we've we've left Ooh, who I perceive. I perceive Ripley and Will as being the two most romantic gentlemen uh, on this on, on this call today. So, Ripley, would you ever contemplate using a watch to to romanticize a partner? Oh, that that is the only way to do it. Uh, that is the <laughs> only way we know how. Uh, yeah, I gave it a maybe. I'm kind of between the two camps. I like all of the, you know, the interesting design details. All of the sun inspired everything, right down to the way they made the, uh, you know, the. The, melted the metal not made the metal but mm. you know uh i it, it's one i'd have to see in person you know what i mean it, it's a different watch it's a bit interesting some of the proportions are a bit wonky but you know it it's different it's unusual and uh, you know we're we get so many of the same watches 
on the market, I'm happy to see something different, even if it's gone full sun mode. Mm. Will, our most romantic, a painter, a painter <laughs> and and decorator, to be honest, but a painter nonetheless. Yes. <laughs> Will, are, are, are you taking your wife for a romantic watch and a, a romantic walk and showing her your watch? Yes. She has she has very limited to no interest in watches whatsoever, and I have tried my best with everything to try uh, to try and sell uh, to try and sell us to her. Um, in terms of this watch, uh, for me it was a bit too complicated. Um, the fluting around the outside reminded me a bit of no disrespect because I wear lots of them, but Seiko, um, and it just didn't quite have that for me. The dial does look good. Um, but I think in terms of the environment, if you really are serious about it, you are far better buying a, a vintage watch um, and keeping a beautiful mechanical watch in circulation um, because that has far more romance for me. So the the um, so the, the 1960s uh, Rolex that I'm wearing now wasn't Stop very expensive at all. showing off the bark and so jack I'm needle. not, I never Stop mentioned, it. I Stop didn't it. mention that name again. Anyway, <laughs> the watch. Um, but in my head, I have this romantic vision that it's from, it, it's from 1960. So imagine the other people that have worn this and the stories it's had, the places it's been to, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's, that's just a nice, beautiful thing to, 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 to think about. So it, it was a miss. It was a miss for me. And also the straps as well. I'm a sucker for changing straps and things like that. And the fact that you are tied into their straps mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't a big fan of. Yeah. You'll not get a Bark and Jack Neat will fit this. Mm -hmm. anyway, right. Our final watch of today. Yeah. He is going to be from the good pilots of a Bremont. Bremont Supermarine S302 Jet GMT. Again, Ariel has reviewed this hands-on. It's a black Bremont. It looks pretty much like all the other black Bremonts. And whoever is opening a parcel in the background, thank you, David, for muting your audio as he opens whatever present has just been received by the postman. Uh, 30 atmosphere, so 300 meter water resistant GMT. It is quite a nice watch. I am a bit of I have a bit of a soft spot for these, but the question is, does everybody else have a soft spot for these two? So on the count of three, minus David, who's currently opening a parcel. No, he's back. On the count of three, what do we reckon to this Bremont? Is it a hit, a miss, or a maybe? Oh, it is. Oh, it's a broad brush approach again. <laughs> uh, well, let's go to Ralph first, who's finally found something to use yep. instead <laughs> of making a sign. He's found a website with some some details on it. Ralph, you give it a hit. Why? I give it a hit, yeah. I think it's a beautiful design. I think the triptych case, a bit smaller, is really, really lovely. I have a Bremen, I have to admit that, so I am a bit biased. I have an MB3, and... Um, the optimized rubber strap is good because the old one was pretty bad. Um, I feel that the color scheme works. I am not objecting to Fortina, and this is, uh, has a lot of it, right? Um, I just love orange and black. It's a, it's a great, great combination, and I think it's a really nice watch. I would think the retail price is a bit on a high side, but other than that, I really like it. Good, good. Leslie, what do you think? I, look, I actually went back and forth on this, and I was going to, I had the miss beside me, but I said, no, actually, I do like it. The black is really striking. Um, the design is, is better than what they've been doing recently. At least it seems to me. Maybe, I'm, maybe I haven't been paying enough attention to what they've been doing in, the, in more recent times. I'm not a particular Bremen fan. I do think they're overpriced and stuff, but, you know, look, if I, gave, if I was given this, if I won this, I'd absolutely wear it. Absolutely wear it. If you won would it, I you'd wear it. Yeah, yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. Ariel, Ariel, if you won it, would you wear it? Yeah, why not? That's simple and straightforward. Any other comments on this watch, Ariel? You reviewed it. You had the hands on. Yeah, I, I, I gave it a maybe. Um, I do think it's handsome. Um, one of the things that I want to point out because probably all of us here have had black coated cases. We're like, this is kind of splotchy. This isn't very well done. Bremont does a very good. DLC coating on their steel. It is a very nice coating for sure. This is 40 millimeters wide. I like this in the larger version of the Supermarine, which is 43 millimeters. They actually mm -hmm. have made up to 45, which is a bit big. Um, the reason this was maybe wasn't just the size, but the GMT component was more of an afterthought. The bezel rotates in one direction like a diver's bezel, and it's kind of thick as a case. So 
This watch was designed really to be a 40 millimeter wide diver. It's best for that. It's just sort of uh, um, not quite GMT enough for the GMT department. Um, prices are getting better and they will continue to get better at Bremont if, if Mr. Uh, Chirado, who is the CEO now, is to be believed. So this is, you know, one of his first sort of collections. And, and you see his restraint, super simple dial, no extra stuff. Uh, great color patterns. Again, he didn't invent the jet color p pattern, uh, but again, this is a strong product. So not quite there yet, but definitely a step in the right direction and, and quality wise. Uh, well done. Rep play. Uh, it's a miss for me. Uh, um, definitely a miss for me. So aesthetically, I like the watch, but let me just go rant about it for a quick second. Here. Yay. That's uh, what we're here for. Mm -hmm. We're here for the we, rants. Yo, we mm -hmm. got to look at it within the context of the original S302, which was, um, more of a diver with a GMT complication. So first and foremost, a dive watch, like Ariel said. From an external perspective, very much the same watch, but what uh, the ex the bezel, the rotating bezel was a 60 minute unidirectional bezel on the original one, and it had a 24 hour scale printed along the chapter ring there. Uh, so it was pretty much a dive watch, but you had a secondary time zone, collar styles, you know, not a travel watch, whatever, fine. Solid watch. Now for the second one, aesthetically, I think it's an improvement. I like the jet color scheme, what have you. I have nothing wrong, you know, no problems with the case itself, like the triptych case, like Braemont as a brand, generally speaking. But in my opinion, this is a step backward from a perspective. Lovely pups. Uh, but if from a functional perspective, <laughs> this has gone a step backwards. The bezel, I saw this watch. Uh, it, it, the bezel is unidirectional. And for a 24 hour bezel, that is more or less pointless you know now if you want to go forward and out you got to go around the dial it makes no sense it, the movement of the bezel corresponds to 60 minutes the scales for 24 hours they didn't want to remake the case components of the 60 minute bezel presumably so they made a 24 hour scale but didn't change the mechanics that seems lazy instead we've now relegated the minute track to the chapter ring so now you can't really put, uh, display two time zones with just the watch and use the bezel you need to use the bezel to display the secondary time zone so if you rotate the bezel now the 24 hour hands not pointing to any relevant thing you can't do it for three time zones so in my opinion the Please aesthetics were please. there the execution was poorly done and in, oh, in the what they really should have done <laughs> yeah what they should have done was left it as it had before keep the 24 hour track on the chapter ring leave the bezel be it leave it 60 minutes so you don't have to re-engineer it and make it bi-directional. And then it's just like what it was. It was a diver with a GMT complication, but first and foremost, a dive watch. And then you don't have someone like me complaining about the fact that you've got a bi-directional uh, bezel as far as the insert, but it only moves in one direction like a 60-minute bezel. So that's uh, where I'm uh, at. A round, of, a round of applause for Ripley for Rant of the Week. Well done. Well done. It's a miss from Ripley in case you hadn't gathered. Would anybody else like to change... Now that you've heard Rip plays, whenever I like to change from a hit or a maybe. Do not comment. use the GMT. Ignore that hand. It's not there. <laughs> okay, who have we not been to? Will, are you influenced by Ripley, the influencer? That was absolutely amazing. That was very <laughs> passionate. That's far more detail than 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 I I was uh, I was going to go into, but and I fully understand and I accept everything he says. Um, for me, it was a <laughs> it was a miss. Because I, I mean, perhaps for the same reason, it was it was neither one nor the other. It wasn't diver enough for me. It wasn't GMT enough for me. And I don't think it combined those two things well enough together. Um, I don't like the strap. I'm not a big fan of the strap um, uh, and the faux tina as well. I prefer something a bit more kind of crisp, uh, crisp um, and clear. Um, the one thing it made me think of, which I appreciate, is probably about twice as much, was the. Um, uh, Seamaster 300, the black, black ceramic, which I appreciate is a, is, a, is a different watch, but it just made me think of that and think, actually, that's a far nicer watch. I appreciate it. it's like twice as much, I think. But um, anyway, for me, it was a it was a miss. Um, I, I don't have a particularly romantic attachment to Bremont necessarily, but I'm willing to be convinced over time. And I know that Rick is probably going to try and convince me. <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to try and convince you. I'm not going to try and convince you. Uh, there's an awful lot of romance in this morning's show, but there we go. That's just what happens when you bring everybody on. Uh, who have we not heard from? Anchor, I don't think we've heard from you on this one. It was a hit for me, but after hearing the rant, I think it's a miss. Yay! <laughs> Mind changers. Influence. That's it. Rip, well, you can officially say you influenced one person. Admittedly, he's in Nepal. So, you know, 
your your influence I, I don't want worldwide I don't want to influence anyone. If someone really likes the watch and doesn't take any issues with what I take issue with it, please, by all means, enjoy it, wear it. And, you know, and it, it's not it's a good watch. I like the original one, but like it, it moved backwards, in my opinion, while hmm. aesthetically moving forward. And I just can't look past that. Good stuff. Who has who have we not heard from on the Bremen? David, are you the last? I've heard no, And Le Leslie? Well, I, yeah, I kind of like this. Yeah, kind of liked it. Yeah. Easy, easy. Yeah. Neither one thing nor another. Yeah. Yeah, we, you know, <laughs> it's a prime. Yeah. yeah, it's black. Exactly. <laughs> David, final word from you on this prime. Uh, it, it was a maybe for me, although um, I, I respect the watch a whole lot more now that I can. Uh, now that I realize that it can evoke such passion <laughs> from somebody. I mean, I mean that's a good watch. If someone can can like and a good brand, you know, if you if it if it uh, makes you feel like that or feel something in in the sea of like boring watches, that's already you know kudos to Ripley and also to to Bremen for for putting something out that people care about this much. Great stuff. Well, and well, I think to be well, fair, that's what Ripley's, Ripley's me. still going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it wouldn't bother me if Bremont wasn't such a good brand. They make great products, so so much so that I'm even able to kind of overlook the high price point. So it really just seems like such a misstep from a brand that otherwise has such good attention to detail. So I think that's why it's under my skin. But if we want to get into the things that bother me, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> Is that just things that bother you in the watch world? Or just things that bother Are we just going to have a Ripley yeah, show? No. Just <laughs> things that bother Ripley. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff well thank you gentlemen for joining us on this first collective hit miss maybe uh hopefully we will do it again soon but as we draw our show to the end it's basically goodbye for me and i didn't get you to make goodbye signs but you can just wave because that works really well in audio so it's goodbye for me and goodbye from all of them goodbye bye bye bye, bye everyone bye, bye everyone